Road tires again. <laughs> well, we're out and about at last. This is less a, a civvy sort of ride today, more sort of painter decorator outfit. Um, just, you know, it started getting late in the day and it was just, come on, let's go just jumped on the bike and went. Uh, Judy's all kitted up of course, she always is. And Richard's come with us, so... Anyway, we're heading for the potting shed at Hyde. They close at uh, three. Oh, it's half past one, so yeah, we'll do that. Takes about... Uh, well, we did it in an hour and nine minutes last week. And I have to say, we were pushing. We should have plenty of time, because we've got an hour and a half to get there today. So, we've just come over the uh, the bridge at Throop Mill. It wasn't too congested actually, not as many people as I expected. Because that is generally one of the places that people congregate on a nice day. So, uh, but maybe they've all gone down the beach today, I don't know. There was a post on Spindat's channel about no hands. And I must admit, after a break from cycling, well, yeah, bringing up the kids, that sort of thing, I did find it a bit tricky going back to no hands. But I've come to the conclusion, you just got to relax and go with it. You know, if you're there with your hands hovering over the bars, all you're thinking about is, when do I need to grab the bars? I'm going to fall off. So, I'm pretty sure it's all about being relaxed, getting a nice cadence going, and, uh, you know, let the laws of physics do the rest. So we're on Matcham's Lane. Vomit Hill coming up. I made a, a comment on Dave Noakes' channel about getting your cycling excuses out early. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing now, because uh, I don't think I'm going to be charging up Vomit Hill. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But uh, it'd be interesting to see the time on the road tires compared to gravel tires, though. But you can never take into account how you feel on a different day, so we'll see. I don't know if that's fast or not, but it hurt. Getting to the top of Vomit Hill. Uh, that's the name of the segment on Strava. And uh, it's beautiful sunshine, but it is actually raining. Hey, there we go. And I did it. And I caught the boys up. Or rather, they waited for me, which is very nice of them. Yeah, we're all three wheelers today. Club. Yeah. Oh, 
doors open. So we just stopped at Cafe Velo in Ringwood, just to confirm, 9 till 2, Saturday, Sundays. And uh, we'll probably drop in there tomorrow on a ride. Whew. And uh, he was just saying how fantastic it is to see everybody again. And I have to admit, I totally agree. Catching up with people, familiar faces, you know, technology's fine and all that, and zooming and all that rubbish, but you can't, yeah, you can't really, uh, you know, beat the real thing, can you? So, uh, yeah, we'll probably nip in there tomorrow. We'll be a bit earlier, do a slightly different route, and that'll be our stop. the last hill up to the potting shed and in about 20 seconds time I will definitely be in the wrong gear. <laughs> this is a uh, just stick it in the granny and sit there until you get to the top. Well it is for me anyway. It's super rich all the way to the top speedy There we go. Oh, you could have given us a toe up there, could you? <laughs> I didn't come all this way for nothing. What have you got? Leek and... What was it? The cheese spinach. And spinach. Cheese, and spinach. Mm. cheese and spinach. And um, bacon and cheese. Can't go wrong. What the... What the... Honestly. You're not into sharing? So, this is the um, much spoken about but little shown potting shed at Hyde. Uh, they've got flowers and other things for sale, but of course for the cyclists, it's all about the cafe and the ice cream. I was just thinking, I could use um, no sharing as an excuse for Julie to... Does that work? No? I know we're under the same roof, but... Wow. <laughs> anyway. <Careful. laughs> you don't want to sleep in the same bed tonight then. <laughs> no sharing. Yeah. Ah. No bed sharing either, okay? It's funny, she always wins somehow. Anyway, we've just eaten at the potting shed, so we are replenished and on our way to the bombing arrow now. Right, we're heading up to the bombing arrow and I'm just about to find out whether that scotch egg has given me scotch egg power or it's just going to be ballast. <sighs> we're back on the gravel. Back on the gravel. <laughs> Nice gravel climb on road tyres, so this could be interesting. Right, it's just here, isn't it? 
Well, that was a bit of an old man comedy senior moment, wasn't it? <laughs> We're up at the bombing arrow. Yes, the new chesty cam GoPro filming position. Yep, this is the filming position. <laughs> This is called the piece to camera moment. This is where I've slowed down because I'm talking to the camera and everybody catches you up and overtakes. And then you've got to charge and catch them up again. Richard's on a, a boardman. ADV 8.9. There you go. I'm on my live invite. And Mike is on a giant. You know, you were doing so well. I was just like, she's going to do it. She's going to do it. She's always got it. It's a tough road. That's right. Hold on. Oh, jeez. Hey. We've now got a side wind. Now, I've got a feeling once we turn the next corner to head back, we might be in a bit of trouble. watts just to maintain 15 mile an hour. Anyway, I've got a plan. I'm just going to tell you all that I've got to slow down to let them catch up. It's only the fair thing to do, you know. protection of the trees. It's wonderful. Anyway, here they come. Oh, there we go. That was amazing into the wind. Amazing. It was. It was really hard work and Mike has stopped for us. And he's going to film us going past and I'm filming you. Thank you. Of course, I can't let him get too far ahead. That didn't go well. Anyway, yeah. So, looks like it's going to be a bit of repair at the side of the road and um, single speed all the way home. Do you want a banana? Uh, uh. Whenever I eat, I just feel Better be the wind and tell me you've got a solution for it. What? What's the matter? Oh, oh you haven't. Oh, an eventful afternoon on the bike. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a couple of bent bits of chain, so I've got to take those links out and uh, rejoin it back together. 
I think there's two, maybe three, looking at it. Um, then hopefully there'll be enough left to uh, create a single speed on the small small uh, cog there. And, um, and then a slow ride home, probably. Well, that's not good. Nah, it's not good, is it? So Richard and I are cycling home on our own. Do you know the way back, to go right? and, Yeah, of course I know the way. That's it. I don't. So we'll go home, get the car, and go get it. I have something that resembles a bike again. There's two snap spokes here. You can see where it's really uh, messed up that rear hub. But uh, yeah, it seems to be okay. I'll just wrap the, the spokes around another spoke for the moment. I'm probably not gonna bother taking that off. Uh, I've got small ring and mid cassette. It's a bit tight, hopefully it'll stay on for an amount of time. There is still some bend in the chain here. You might be able to see that or not. But uh, yeah, so these are the bits that had to come off. And uh, obviously I'll be taking those with me as well as some other scumbags in a tube that they've left around. But uh, other than that, I think I've got something that may or may not be rideable. We shall see. I might have to take another link out because that's very bent that chain but it is actually working up there so let's see what happens when I start pedaling the thing <laughs> and there's another win for disc brakes we're on Matrams Lane and we're going to go past the airport and that was a steep little bit there Richard's behind me. We've done 55 kilometres, which is quite a long way for Rich. So he's struggling a little bit, I think. I think we've tried to break him, but I don't think we've managed it. At a cadence of 90, I've got 11 miles an hour, so it's going to take me about an hour to get home. So there I was, doing 10 miles an hour, <laughs> and the chain snapped again, so I'm just putting it back together, but um, it sounds like, uh, sounds like Julie Rescue is on the way. So, uh, I don't know, I really want to sort of do this. I've only got to put the chain back together. I've taken out a couple of bent links that were still a little bit bent and I've taken the good ones out of the ones I removed earlier um, and made up a length out of some of them. I've got like one link to do, but I know she's gonna turn up in about five minutes, so <sighs> what'd you do? What'd you do? I can't tell her to go back and I'm determined to get home, can I? Um, yeah, I did phone her from back there and say I'm on my way, but she said, no, no, I'm coming to pick you up. So I'm gonna let her pick me up, I'm afraid. So there you go. But, uh, yeah, I think if I'd have had... Do I carry another chain? That's a heavy old lump of metal to carry, isn't it? So, probably not. Probably not. It's a one-off. In 20,000 kilometres, that's the first time that's happened. So, I'm probably not going to do that. So, but there we go. So, that's the end of today's ride. One way or the other. <laughs> uh, probably about three hours, three and a half hours walk from here. Uh, so, still not terrible. Still not terrible. Um, would have got away with it, but there we go. Right, Julie's arrived. Time to get the bike in the car. Wash my hands, hopefully she's bought some wet wipes. I did ask her to. And um, yeah, go home and get sorted out.